you've been asking God for direction. You've been asking God for next steps. You say, God, I, I know the big picture. I know what you've told me is going to come to pass in my life, but I don't know what to do next. And today, God has a word for you today from his word. And he actually gave me a picture to explain exactly what's going on and what he wants you to do next. So we are going to go to the story of Jonah. Jonah chapter one. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose and to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went into it to go with them to, to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken. So God tells Jonah, go and preach repentance to the city, Nineveh, which is the capital of Assyria and Assyrians back then were so wicked, if you know the historical context of them, they were so wicked that they would make furniture out of people's bones and skin. And he instead gets up and goes to Tarshish. He, he flees from God's presence and gets in a boat with a bunch of unbelievers. And what does God do? He sends a correcting storm, okay? And a lot of times we think, okay, God has given me, uh, you know, a certain commandment. Maybe it's, um, you know, I want you to start reading the Bible every day. Hey, I, I want you to join this, uh, this Bible study group or, hey, I want you to get rid of smoking or I want you to get rid of something else or whatever. And, and you go along with it and you say, yes, God, uh, I admit this is wrong. And, and you repent and, you know, you get right with the Lord in that way. But sometimes God will ask you to give up something, ask you to do something. And that's like your Achilles heel, that area that you don't want to give up, that area that you're like, mm, and then you start running from the presence of the Lord. You start avoiding that. And you're like, I'm still going to go to church and stuff. And I'm just going to pretend that God never said anything. Maybe it's you've been dating an unbeliever and God's told you, I want you to get out of this relationship. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what fellowship does light have with darkness. And then after that says, that God tells his people to come out of them. You know, don't, don't be with them. But you say, no, God, I can save them. When we go against the word of the Lord, okay, that says don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers, and we, we get unequally yoked with an unbeliever, we are saying, God, I know better than you. We are, we are rebelling against the word of the Lord. It is sin at the end of the day. It is rebellion. And you will suffer consequences for that. I remember I, I lived with an unbeliever. He was an agnostic. And he would make fun of me for spending time with Jesus. And he would mock me and, and, and ended up persecuting me. I had to leave. So when I first came to the Lord. So there's serious consequences to going against what God has said. And he will never tell you to marry or date an unbeliever ever because that goes against his word. So if you heard that, you heard the devil. Um, but, but, you know, God tells you to do certain things and, you know, you don't want to do it. And so God leads you straight into a correcting storm. The Bible says that a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. God's the sovereign over your steps, right? So sometimes some people have to learn the hard way. The Bible says in Psalm 17, 10, a single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on a fool. Somebody that has understanding, somebody that's mature in the Holy Spirit is an adult and they only need God to tell them one time to do something or tell they only need God to correct them on something that they did wrong one time for them to fix it, repent and turn and do what they need to do. But somebody that is foolish, it takes it, even a hundred lashes doesn't, doesn't work. So we're going to talk about Hubert. Hubert is a father to uh, Andy, okay? And Andy is a very wise child. And he says, Andy
Andy, I don't want you to uh, draw on the walls anymore, okay? You drew on the walls. I don't want you to do that ever again, okay? And he's like, okay. And he's like, all right, you can go play in the park. Very simple, very easy, one step process. Now here he is with little uh, Macy, right? Hubert's telling Macy, Macy, you can't write on the wall. And what happens? She goes and she writes on the wall again. And then there's another step. He has to come back to her and he has to say, hey, you cannot write on the walls. Now I have to put you in timeout. Now I have to put you here, right? You did the crime, now you gotta do the time. And then after she does that, then she can go and get on that on that swing in the park. So you want maybe God to bring you marriage, but you're being disobedient to date somebody you shouldn't be dating. And so you're gonna have to go through all these extra steps to get there. You're delaying the process. It could just be a very quick process, boom, boom. Our disobedience really keeps us wandering in the desert dee, 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 and complaining too. When we're complaining, oh my gosh, God, it's so hard. Da, 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 da. The Israelites didn't get to the promised land because of complaining. Complaining is a sin most people don't talk about. But, you know, God will let you go your own way, right? He has, he gives you free will, but your way always ends, leads to a dead end. So let's keep reading with Jonah. Um, you know, it says right here in verse five, then the mariners, right? The, these Marines, they were, or not Marines, but these, these, these people in the ship that were with Jonah, they were afraid. Okay. Because of this huge storm that was coming about and every man cried to his God. So they all had different gods and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, what do you mean sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they say to one another, come let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So he's, he's asleep in the ship. He doesn't care anymore. And the fact is, is that these, all these people around him are suffering because of him. A lot of times your disobedience will not only, right? Your disobedience not to rise up and be the person that God has called you to be is going to hinder so many people that are assigned to your life in the future that you're going to rise up and talk to and encourage and get them out of, you know, whatever abusive relationship with your testimony and everything. All that's not going to happen. So you're affecting a whole group of people that your testimony is going to save because you don't want to rise up and be the person that God has called you to be, but you're just sleeping, you're being lazy or whatever, you're running from God. But also you are affecting in sin and in rebellion, it's selfish because it, it does affect people around you. Your rebellion does affect those around you. So they cast lots, right? And they're like, okay, it's Jonah's fault, right? Jonah's the one. Then they said to him, please tell us for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation and where do you come from? What is your country and what of your people? So he says to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Okay. Verse 10, then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, what have, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. So he told them like, I fled from God. That's why we're here in this situation. It's my fault. So number one, first step is whatever, whatever disobedience you're in, it doesn't matter. If God has told you, hey, I want you to reconcile with this person. I want you to apologize to this person. Whatever it is that God has told you to do, you've not done it. I want you to get rid of this addiction. Um, a first acknowledge it confess it, right? The Bible says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Um, so the Bible says also, if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The first step is saying, God, I agree. What I did was wrong. I know, I know. And seeking, you know, 
some accountability from brothers and sisters in Christ around you saying, hey, I, I fell back into pornography. I fell back into this, whatever it is. Uh, then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. Temp tempestuous. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will be calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Right? So accept God's chastity. You know, this correcting storm that's going to come in. Um, it's going to be the consequences of your rebellion against the Lord. And, you know, unfortunately, if you're in this spot, you need to learn the hard way. And I was that person. But you have to, you can't say, okay, I'm in the storm now because of you, God. A lot of times we do that. And I, I've done that before where I'm like, Lord, you know, how could you let me get so heartbroken? How could you let me date this person? How could you let me? And he's like, I never told you to date that person. I actually told you in my word not to date that person because they're not a believer or whatever it is. I told you, you know, go and reconcile to your brother. You know, I said these things in my word. I've told you these things. I warned you against this sin. I warned you not to drink and drive whatever it is and we cannot sit here and blame the lord and get mad at the lord for our sin and our consequences for our sin so i think the next step is is accepting that we will have to pay some consequences for um disobeying the lord um so you know god will let you go your own way and it'll lead to a dead end and then you'll have to start back at square one but he gives second chances. God is the God of second, third, fourth, millionth chances. And, you know, he ends up being able to fulfill his calling. He goes down to Nineveh and he tell the, tells these people to repent. And guess what? They repent. And, you know, it's amazing. He doesn't even know it, but his book is going to go down in history in the Bible for billions of people to read. And it's going to help billions of people. Like, his calling was great and he didn't even know it. You know, don't miss out on your calling because, you know, you don't want to give up certain things. Or you don't want to listen to the Lord or you're leaning on your own understanding. Obey the Lord. You know, the Lord, in the book of Job, it says the Lord gives and he takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A lot of times we say, oh God, you're so blessed. Like, I, I love you. I praise you because you've given to me. You've given me this job. You've given me this relationship. You've given me this. You've given me food. All this stuff. I'm so grateful. But how many times do we say, God, blessed be your name because you took away. You took away that relationship. You took away these things. You took away um, that friendship. You God takes away those things which eventually are going to destroy us and we don't know it you know he sees a million steps ahead before us um you know and and in this in this story we read that jonah it says it in in chapter four verse one it displeased jonah exceedingly and he became angry so he prayed to the lord and said oh lord was not this what i said when i was still in my country he didn't want to preach repentance to these people in Assyria. Why? Because they were wicked and he hated the wicked people. You know, God never tells you to pray for your enemies unless he did it first. He doesn't tell us to do anything he hasn't done. When he says pray for your enemies, you know, bless those who curse you, it's because he's done it. The Bible says in Romans 5.10 that God died for us while we were yet his enemies. While you were yet his enemy, he died for you. And, you know, God wants you to give mercy to your enemy. He wants you to pray for your enemy. And at the end of the day, he loves them because he created them. We think, oh, you know, Hitler doesn't deserve any mercy, but, but I do because I'm a good person because I've never killed anybody. Well, no one's good, the Bible says. And... We all deserve justice, but praise be to God that Jesus Christ took the punishment for our sin, the justice we deserve on the cross, which is hell, right? We, we, we would deserve hell because we've come against the Lord. We sin against the Lord. We've all lied. We've all stolen. We've all done those things. But if we accept Jesus is, you know, taking our place on that cross, 2,000 years ago and, and raising up from the dead on the third day and we turn from our sin, we will 
have eternal life. We won't have to suffer the consequences of hell, right? Um, God didn't want you to go to hell so much so that he took it on the cross. It's amazing. And um, in the same way, we need to pray for our enemies. So today, whatever it is that you've been holding back from, you don't want to obey the Lord in, in a certain area. Listen to him. Listen to his instruction. Because your calling, your purpose, whatever dream God has given you, it's not going to come to pass unless you really uh, uh, listen to him and, and, and be obedient in the next steps that are small. That maybe you don't see like, oh, you know, God, you told me marriage. Like, I want to hear the next step is go to this Bible study group. No, actually, the next step is start pruning yourself and cleaning yourself up so that I can introduce you to the person and you won't destroy it when I put it together. So I hope that this message really ministered to somebody. Uh, I learned the hard way and I'm telling you, you don't need to. You can listen to the voice of the Lord right now and he will lead you to your purpose and the dream that he's placed in your heart because obedience at the end of the day is better than sacrifice.